Last time we talked about um, air, and we learned that air is a mixture. And the mixtures are described by the pure substances and the concentrations of the pure substances that make up that mixture. So we can have the same name, air, but the composition is going to be different depending on where you sample the air from, um, you know, whether the air just came into your body or out of your body, whether you're on a crowded, busy street or inside your home. You know, air is going to have a slightly different composition. So even though it's called the same thing, it's going to be slightly different and it's going to be defined by the components and the concentrations of the components. So last time we took a little bit of um, time to uh, look at, you know, what do these concentration units mean conceptually um, that are typically used in describing the components of a gas such as air, and the common units are percentages or parts per hundred, parts per million, and parts per billion. Today we're going to take a closer look at um, the substances, the pure substances that make up a mixture. Okay. Some you know air quality standards. Um, we know what do we consider uh, the amount of these particular pollutants that could be found in the earth? What concentrations, excuse me, could be found in the atmosphere? Uh, what are the the safe limits of the concentrations? I should say. So some of the pollutants listed here, for example, are carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, lead particulates, and sulfur dioxide. You'll notice that the concentrations are given in units of parts per million for everything except for lead and particulates. And then in units of micrograms per cubic meter for everything. The reason why lead and particulates are not given in units of parts per million is because parts per million are assuming the parts are all in the same state, that state being the gas state. As it turns out, lead exists in the air as little bits of solid, and particulates are other undefined bits of solid, such as dust, pollen, viruses, anything else. Okay, so we're going to come back again um, and today and start taking a closer look at, so we know there's uh, things called mixtures and we know that they're made of certain substances. We want to be able to understand, um, you know, what are those substances? Okay, so back to our organizational chart of matter. Last time we spent our time talking about mixtures this time, in uh, part one of this lecture, we're going to be talking about um, elements and compounds, these pure substances, okay? What do we mean when we say element? What do we mean by compound? You know, how do we define them? How do we know, uh, you know, how to name them and what their names mean? All right, so that's what we're going to be doing today. First of all, um, uh, the pure substances box was, was separated into something called a compounds and something called elements. So the definition of an element is it's, it's a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. All right, so it, fundamentally it's all the same type of atom um, that makes up an element, and chemically you cannot break it down into a simpler substance. All right. Um, as it turns out, most elements that exist in nature are metals, and most elements are found as solids. All right. Is it and um, further, uh, most elements as they exist in nature can exist can exist um, stably as single atoms, as just atoms. But there are seven co common elements that are never found as single atoms in nature. They're all um, found as diatomic molecules, and we're going to have to memorize them. But first of all, what I mean by a single atom, for example, helium. The element helium um, can exist in nature as a single atom all by itself, as a stable uh, substance. However, oxygen and nitrogen cannot exist as a single atom. Rather, they exist as what we call diatomic molecules, two atoms chemically combined. All right, so oxygen in nature, when we find it, for example, in the air, it's going to exist as a, the diatomic molecule O2. All right, um, and nitrogen is going to exist as the diatomic molecule N2, whereas helium just exists as, a, as an, um, an atom. So that's what we mean by a diatomic molecule. All right. 
Uh, let's see. And I mentioned that there are seven. The seven, here's a periodic table. The seven elements that exist in nature as diatomic molecules, you have to memorize it. There's not a lot in this class that you have to memorize, but this you sort of do. And I'll tell you, there's an easy way. Um, the seven elements that exist in nature as diatomics are nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and hydrogen. Okay? And the way I remember it is I know there's seven. I find atomic number seven on the periodic table, and I make the number seven and that covers six of my seven. The other one is hydrogen. It's kind of weird. It's an outlier, but you just need to memorize the hydrogen also. So hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine all exist as diatomic molecules in nature. So when we write them, for example, later on we're going to be looking at chemical reactions, we always have to write them as they exist. So oxygen, O2, nitrogen, N2, um, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and of course hydrogen. Those are the seven. All other elements can exist as single atoms in nature.